Houston Station, step 3.1, the Apache equalization valve is open. And we copy. Houston Station uh, on two, DPDT has plateaued to uh, minus zero to small zero one. Copy and checking. And you guys are go to proceed in step three decimal three. Up you go. This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting a look at the inside of the International Space Station facing towards the forward end. Uh, you're looking down uh, node two into the pressurized mating adapter. The hatch at the very end there is uh, leading to the international docking adapter where the Crew Dragon is currently docked to the International Space Station. Crew is running a little bit ahead of schedule, just uh, completing their lunch time a little bit early. Uh, they, the crew, actually had a successful vestibule leak check very recently. Right now, they are undergoing their tasks to pressurize the vestibule. Once it's stable, they'll be able to actually open the hatch. Now, currently tracking a time a little bit earlier than scheduled. It could be as early as 6.50 a.m. Central Time, perhaps a bit later. Again, the uh, Expedition 58 crew working a little bit ahead of schedule now, tracking an earlier hatch opening time cutting their lunch a bit short and going through the procedures to pressurize the vestibule in between the station and the crew dragon. We do have confirmation that dragon is now configured to receive power through node 2, meaning the station power will be provided to uh, crew dragon, or at least the capability is enabled. Inside on the right, uh, commander of Expedition 58, Oleg Kononenko of Roscosmos. Inside the pressurized mating adapter now is NASA's Anne McLean, and at the front of your screen, you're seeing Canadian Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques.
You're getting a split screen view now on the left mission control center here in Houston. That's the International Space Station uh, flight control room. Uh, the team's over here monitoring all of the systems of the orbiting complex. On the right, SpaceX's mission control out of Hawthorne, California. Team's there monitoring the Crew Dragon, currently docked to the forward end of the station. As we undergo the pressurization of the vestibule between the two vehicles now, getting ready for hatch opening later today. Again, tracking hatch opening a little bit earlier than expected. Could happen as early as 6.50 a.m. Central Time. We'll continue to provide updates as the crew works through these procedures a little bit ahead of schedule. This is Mission Control Houston. You're getting a live view from the inside of the International Space Station looking towards the forward hatch. The hatch is open. They are way ahead of schedule. Uh, 6.38 a.m. Central Time. The hatch between, or the hatch to the International Docking Adapter has been open. Taking a few pictures inside. Still some work to do until they get to the hatch of the Crew Dragon. But in the meantime, a major milestone. Uh, towards, the, towards the camera the most, uh, you see uh, David St. Jacques looking over. Commander uh, Expedition 58, Commander Oleg Kononenko on the right. Uh, wearing protective gear in case there are any uh, 
uh, foreign objects or debris. Uh, she has goggles you may be seeing here in a minute is uh, NASA's Anne McLean. Right now conducting a survey of the inside uh, between the pressurized mating adapter where the three crew members are right now and uh, through the hatchway to the international docking adapter. Just conducting a survey, making sure everything is okay. Once they confirm these uh, next steps, they'll be able to uh, perform the next major milestone, which will be the hatch opening of the Crew Dragon, right on the other side of that open hatch right now. That's step four to small one. Hey, that hatch is open. There was no sign of forp, no condensation. There was a, a little bit of dust in the air initially. That's all we observed. Copy all. This is Mission Control Houston. You just heard David St. Jacques, uh, flight engineer of Expedition 58, astronaut of the Canadian Space Agency, providing a little update on what's uh, on the other side of the hatch there. Nothing too major, just a little bit of dust, but otherwise uh, pretty clear. Astronauts con continuing to conduct the survey. You can see some of the flashes of the camera uh, at the hands now of NASA's Anne McLean. That says Anne McLean in the back there. You can see with the headlamp, David St. Jacques providing a mounted light at the hatchway between the pressurized mating adapter and node 2. Provide a little bit of extra light uh, into the international docking adapter area. Again, Anne McLean wearing the protective gear just in case of any foreign objects. Recently, uh, David St. Jacques reported minimal dust, but otherwise pretty clean. After uh, conducting the survey and, and wrapping up with any photography taken during this time, the next major milestone will be to open another hatch that's beyond this one that you're seeing right now. That is the hatch of the Crew Dragon, currently docked to the forward end of the International Space Station. Docking time for that vehicle is 4.51 a.m. Central Time. This is Mission Control Houston. If you're just joining us, three Expedition 58 crew members about to open the hatch of the Crew Dragon. The hatch currently open between the pressurized mating adapter where you see David Sanjok on the left and Oleg Kononenko on the right and McLean inside the international docking adapter. Joining us now is uh, Dan Hewitt. Joining us now, Dan and Tom from Hawthorne, California, at SpaceX's Mission Control. Let's hear some updates from their end on the uh, updates, the latest updates right, of thanks, the uh, Crew Dragon and what's to expect for these procedures as the crew uh, begins to head towards opening the hatch and actually going inside. Dan and Tom. All right, thanks, Gary. And yeah, we're we're watching along from here too. Thanks for taking us. Uh, from docking to where we are now and yeah, we got we got one hatch open. We got one more to go So uh, obviously that second hatch being opened is the one we're really looking for when we get the hatch open and uh, the crew can actually start going inside a dragon Yeah, it's been a very exciting night here at SpaceX headquarters on Hawthorne. Uh, we're all 
very much anticipating this second hatch opening. Uh, as you can see on your screen right here, this is a view from inside the International Space Station. Uh, and the crew right now is kind of huddled in the pressurized mating adapter. Um, they currently have the hatch between that PMA and the International Docking Adapter open. Uh, and they're currently just doing the final checks uh, before they open the second hatch, which is in the top of Crew Dragon. Yeah, and as, if anybody has been tuned in, uh, we're expecting that potentially in the next five minutes or so, uh, the crew is just going to have to do some final checks and then we'll be ready to go. So that hatch opening could come as early as 4.50 a.m. Pacific time. Sorry to keep jumping around on time zones, but we are in different parts of the country as all the teams are working together. Uh, but it could be coming in just about five minutes from now. Uh, pretty shortly, the crew in the space station is going to be donning some protective gear. Uh, this is a, just a precaution, as uh, this is the first time that the Dragon spacecraft has uh, docked with the International Space Station. Um, it's a precaution to make sure that there's no particulates in the air or anything uh, that happened between the ascent and docking. So you might be seeing them donning some masks uh, right before they open that hatch. That's right. And one of the first things they'll do is they'll actually go in and uh, take an air sample reading uh, just before uh, the actual air and dragon mixes with the air on board the space station. So they'll pop in real quick and uh, take those air samples and then come back and just compare everything. Go ahead, Ann. Just put a couple of photos on SSC-13. Um, I just noticed two pieces of uh, FOD on the dragon hatch on the outside. Uh, one of them just looks like a small piece of string or rope that's on the uh, hatch label. Uh, the second one is about an inch and a half, and it looks, it, what it appears as is a uh, kind of clear plasticky uh, type of material. Um, but I put a, some photos on SSC 13. Okay, copy the two items that you've uh, noticed and then them being on SSC 13, and we'll get those pulled down. And so just there, NASA astronaut Anne McLean. So she reported she saw two pieces of FOD. That's an acronym that's foreign object debris. And that's basically any object or any piece of material that isn't necessarily expected to be there. Uh, happy to report that the initial look through the window, everything looks great. Uh, Ripley and Earth both look like they enjoyed their trip up here. And I see no signs of any off nominal undetected events. Great stuff. Uh, you just heard uh, that sounds like they're getting a good look uh, through the window in the hatch of that Dragon 2. They were able to see Ripley and the zero-G indicator inside there, I think. Uh, looks like everything uh, looks nominal from their point of view. Uh, hopefully, they'll get a first-hand look once they get that hatch open. Uh, the Dragon 2 hatch does have a window mounted right in the center, and that's the, the crew can, uh, during op docking operations, if they were inside, could be able to look straight outside and uh, verify with their own eyes if they needed to that the uh, docking was proceeding nominally. Tough to see that window right now just because of the geometry of the pressurized mating adapter, but um, looks like they're able to get a good look. Yeah, again, once the crew gets the hatch open, the first thing they'll do is go in and take a couple of air samples, and they'll come back. They'll leave the hatch open and come and uh, compare those air samples to basically just the, the background uh, samples that they get from inside the space station. That's one of the interesting things about being in microgravity is there's no natural convection. So the atmosphere inside the Dragon capsule, even though you open up the hatchway, as long as the pressures are pretty much the same, uh, the air is not going to start mixing until we actually engage some active measures. They have a bunch of fans throughout the entire space station just to actively move the air. Because if you were to, to just sit in a cabin in microgravity, 
the air wouldn't move on its own. Um, that's one of the things uh, that they would always talk about. Uh, some of the crew members would, if you stay in one place and you're constantly breathing out, you'll kind of get a, a bubble of CO2 around you as you're exhaling. Uh, so it's always good for them to move around. But uh, So they're going to open up the hatch and take those air sample readings. And then once everything checks out OK, uh, they, they kick on the fans and they actually start circulating. Uh, all of the air uh, inside of Dragon with that of the rest of the space station. So Dragon already drawing on power from the station pretty soon. Going to be sharing its, uh, its, its oxygen and its atmosphere too. It's kind of crazy, all these things we take for granted here on Earth and the presence of gravity uh, so changed by the lack of it on orbit. Now we're getting some views right now uh, past the astronauts into that uh, international docking adapter. This was the vestibule that Dan and I had been talking about earlier. Um, What's interesting is that the, the place where they're kind of poking their heads into just a few hours ago was exposed to the vacuum of space and uh, now been pressurized up after a hard capture of the Dragon capsule. And one of the, one of the usual questions that uh, people will ask astronauts is, does space have a smell? And a lot of them will tell you uh, the first time you open up a hatch to a new vehicle or when crew members come back inside after a spacewalk, they do report uh, space having a smell. They usually se uh, say it smells almost like burnt metal. Um, some believe that might be the atomic oxygen, which is out in the environment, uh, but they might be smelling that right now because this, the area that they're in, where they're basically inside the international docking adapter now, uh, was just exposed to space a couple hours ago. They're right up next to that uh, blinking strobe light that we saw right now on the uh, mounted right in the center of that dragon hatch uh, that we watched come ever so closely uh, during those docking maneuvers. And again, just three crew members right now on board the space station. It's the Expedition 58 crew. They're led by a Russian cosmonaut, Oleg Kononenko, who's uh, at the bottom of the camera, kind of floating in and out. Uh, in the center of your camera is NASA astronaut Anne McLean. And further along in the pressurized mating adapter, right up against the hatch, is a Canadian astronaut, David St. Jacques. There you can see uh, a straight shot uh, through that pressurized mating adapter, and then the international docking adapter. And then uh, you can actually just make out a little bit of that Crew Dragon hatch that will soon be opening. crew gracious enough to give us a bit of a zoom there and there you go there there it is there's the hatch it's worth noting that the pressurized mating adapter is actually how the uh, space shuttle also docked with the international space station on two, uh, five point seven. ready for a final dragon hatch equalization checking and so Anne McLean calling down the crew just about done with their steps so the teams on the ground are going to check it out, make sure everything is equalized between Dragon itself. So again, you want you want to make sure that the pressure inside the spacecraft and inside the space station are the same. Otherwise, opening the hatch could either be really difficult or a little more dynamic than you might want. So uh, always a good idea and always the last thing that they do uh, just to make sure these pressures are equal. Equalization time. Uh, we're still looking into it. We're seeing dragon temperatures just a little bit higher than expected, um, so we should have that for you shortly. You can copy.
as Dan mentioned, we're just now waiting for uh, the crew aboard the space station to verify that uh, everything is good inside that Dragon capsule. Uh, it's and in contact with the capsule via the umbilicals. Um, and the expected equalization time would be two minutes or less. Be two minutes or less. As you just heard, it sounds like uh, equalization may be complete as early as two minutes from now. Uh, but we're getting all that. They're getting Dragon telemetry via those umbilicals that plugged in shortly after hard capture. And they're able to monitor all of the telemetry channels coming out of Dragon, which includes things like air cabin temperature and pressure, humidity, uh, presence of any other things inside the air. Uh, and by monitoring those, they can make sure that the pressure and temperature are at appropriate levels to open that hatch. And just a quick handover. We'll get that video communication back with the station momentarily. We should have a pretty solid block coming up. So as long as everything continues to move along quickly, uh, we're going to have great views uh, of that hatch open. Everything gone well ahead of the timeline so far today. Docking was early. It's great news. Uh, yeah, the crew's been moving through all of these steps really quickly and should get the hatch open early as well. On your screen right now, you can see the two uh, mission control centers currently uh, watching over the operations on orbit right now. On the left is uh, Johnson, and on the right is mission control at SpaceX, where Dan and I are right now. Yep. We can't wave from that camera view, but yeah, we're, we're just over top overlooking them. And, and those teams uh, have been working hand in hand pretty much since uh, the vehicle launch. Uh, things really kicking off with what we call integrated operations, and that was uh, just about when we went on the air earlier today before the docking, uh, which is about two and a half hours or so before the actual docking to the space station, and that was just when everything's really in lockstep between the two teams, sending to Dragon and uh, making sure that the station's ready to receive it. Um, but everything went real smoothly. We went through all the demos, had no issues the whole way up and actually docked ahead of time. Uh, that docking again was at 2.51 a.m. Pacific time, 5.51 a.m. on the other coast uh, over in the east there uh, for everyone a little bit earlier in the morning for us. Can't complain but about early. Can't complain when it's space flight operations. Uh, they, they don't tend to follow our clocks, they follow their own clock, which the space station follows Greenwich Mean Time, that's what the crew's on, uh, and that's what we use to coordinate all of the different teams around the globe. And that's Ann McLean that we're hearing. And she's just reporting that the crew is just about ready. And so we should hopefully be getting that hatch opening coming real soon. That's right. That, so the ground is still looking for the pressures to all equal out. And then as soon as that looks good, they'll be ready to press forward. But again, I think hatch opening was originally supposed to be about 45 minutes from now. Uh, so we are still well ahead of our timeline for the day. Now, once they open the hatch, uh, we're still not done. There's still a lot more tests to run to make sure that uh, Crew Dragon is safe to enter and uh, make sure that all the, everything looks nominal. Um, we will oh, we're actually right now seeing some uh, live views inside the Crew Dragon spacecraft right there. You can see Ripley sitting over in the uh, far left seat. And of course, the zero gravity indicator, which has taken the liking to that footrest on the closest seat uh, to the screen. Which uh, this has me really excited because anybody who's followed 
a lot of space station operations over the years. I can't remember a time we've had the view from inside the spacecraft that just docked as the hatch gets open. So this is going to be really cool to see the hatch come open from this perspective, what the astronauts will actually be seeing when they're sitting inside this vehicle and we'll be able to see the space station crew come through. You can imagine seeing a time lapse of this footage from uh, launch, you know, when, when they closed the side hatch of the Dragon to load all the cargo in, and then fast forwarded to now when astronauts on orbit are about to enter through the forward hatch. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And it's, I mean, it's going to be a fairly quick trip, about five days attached to the space station. Dragon did deliver a little over 400 pounds of cargo uh, packed away underneath the seats there. Uh, some of that, some crew supplies, so things like food and clothing uh, for the crew, uh, probably even some clothing for some upcoming crew members. So we have three new uh, astronauts set to launch uh, less than two weeks from now on a Soyuz rocket out of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Uh, but the crew will be responsible, obviously, for unpacking all of that cargo. Uh, one of the things that and is Station included Houston in there on are two, some cold At bags. this time, we are ready for you to pick back up in the procedure. In 6.1, you have a go to proceed with mass donning, and we'll be standing by for the comm check. Copy. In work. So this is a view from, uh, or we just had a view from the exterior. You could see exactly where it was attached to the space station. But um, yeah, on the right-hand side of your screen, you got inside on one side of the hatch, inside the International Space Station. On the left-hand side of your screen, the other side of the hatch. Uh, can't wait to see those two views merge with uh, crew members passing through. So on the right-hand side of your screen, inside the space station, you can see those crew members donning those uh, protective masks just as a precaution as they enter the uh, Dragon spacecraft. This is the first time that the Crew Dragon has docked at the space station, so it doesn't, help, doesn't hurt to have as much caution as uh, possible. Yep. With NASA, we're definitely always about caution, especially since uh, you know we're ultimately responsible uh, for the lives of these crew members when they're on board and not expected to have any issues inside uh, but the crews will go in just just to make sure they'll take a couple of quick atmospheric readings and then they'll come back inside the space station the dragon hatch will stay open uh, they'll come back inside of the space station compared to just background readings in another lab uh, but and then once that's all good they'll get the go to actually begin mixing the atmosphere and turn on those fans to uh, start that motion between Dragon and the space station. I think the expected choreography is David St. Jacques should be the first one through the hatch. We'll see if that holds, uh, but he's the one on the right there, and he again is the Canadian astronaut currently on board the space station. In the middle there is Oleg Kononenko, a Russian cosmonaut, and the current Expedition 58 commander and then Anne McLean over on the left there, the NASA astronaut on board. So uh, I think once they get uh, all geared up, they'll be able to move through the final portion of actually opening up this hatch.
once the hatch is open and the crew members are able to get those air samples, uh, Dan and I will be continuing our coverage uh, all the way until uh, the air is, con is, uh, is determined to be good to go and, we're, and they're able to start mixing the atmosphere and then we do expect hopefully a statement from those astronauts uh, later in the morning. We will be here with you the entire time. Nowhere else I'd rather be right now. Exactly. Well, except maybe up there opening the hatch. <laughs> So it looks like a pose for one final picture before they go in. They're looking great up there. Houston, station one, two, com check. That is a good com check. And can you confirm that you can hear both Oleg and David in their epicas? Yes, we have good communication between crew members. All right, you are good to proceed. You have a go in step seven, decimal one. And so with that go, and you heard seven decimal one, so that's the next step in their procedures, and that's for them to actually go in and start opening up the hatch. Seven decimal one is to move in close to the hatch. Seven decimal two is to open the hatch. So we are right there. So everyone keep an eye out. We should see that hatch opening momentarily. Again, you're going to see Oleg and David up at the hatch and hanging back in node two. Hopefully on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, inside the Dragon capsule, we might be able to see some of that hatch open activity. Yeah, it's really unique to have this, this perspective to have from, from both sides. So standing by for hatch open. Station Dragon Hatch opened at 1307. Copy. And there you have it. Dragon Hatch is open. Anne McLean made the call. It was 507 a.m. Pacific. I think 807 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm doing some quick math in my head, and that's the International <laughs> Space Station and Dragon docked together, flying over the northern Atlantic, about 255 statute miles in the air. So the Dragon hatch is open. You can see an arm and reaching this is, in. This is the very first time that humans have been on orbit inside of a Dragon 2 capsule. Or any, oh, excuse me, not any Dragon, oh, a Dragon 2 capsule. <laughs> All right, they, again, so it looks like David St. Jacques, he's going to be the first one through. He's going to take some quick atmospheric readings. Uh, he's using a device that we have over on the U.S. side. There he is, David inside, inside of Dragon. Human beings inside the Dragon spacecraft. You might hear some uh, cheers here from uh, SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne. Uh, this is just an incredible sight for the SpaceX team uh, to see these ISS crew members inside the capsule. And so they're going to use these two separate devices, uh, David using one and Ala Kononenko using another. And it takes them a couple of minutes usually uh, for the sample readers to gather what they need. And then they'll move back outside of Dragon. And again, just compare this to the generic background uh, readings that we have inside of another module on board the station. They should be heading over to the Destiny module, uh, just two, basically two doors down from Dragon now. Uh, and they'll compare that. And then once everything looks good, uh, the teams expect to wait about half an hour. And then they'll start mixing the air between Dragon and the International Space Station.
Our zero G indicator getting a little bump there. He is now free to move about the cabin. And again, if you're just now joining us, the hatch is open inside of the Dragon spacecraft. Right now, two of the crew members from Expedition 58 are inside, just taking some atmospheric readings. It's Oleg Konyenko from the Russian Space Agency, Roscosmos, and David St. Jacques from the Canadian Space Agency. Uh, once they get what they need, they'll move back outside, compare the results to some readings just from another module on board the station. You can actually see one of them. So the cargo that Dragon delivered is just underneath the seats. There's about 400 pounds, a little over 400 pounds in total. You can see them inspecting some of those cargo bags down there. Oh. Can you tell we're in microgravity? <laughs> it's been indicated. <laughs> All right, again, if you're just now tuning in, you're seeing human beings inside of the Crew Dragon spacecraft. It's David St. Jacques and Oleg Konyanko from Expedition 58. They're already moving some of the cargo around. Uh, they're in there taking some atmospheric readings. That hatch was opened at 5.07 a.m. Pacific, 8.07 a.m. Eastern, while the station was flying just about 255 statute miles over the northern Atlantic. Getting, this, getting our split screen view back. So the one on the left, that camera is inside of Dragon. That camera on the right is inside of Node 2, looking down the pressurized mating adapter into the Dragon spacecraft. Hatch open. That white box moving around inside the international docking adapter right there is uh, one of the pieces of cargo that Dragon took up. Uh, as Dan said, that cargo is stored down below the crew area, below where the seats are. And it looks like they are already transferring some of that cargo out. A while ago, we talked about the differences between docking and berthing. Uh, one of the <clears throat> uh, big advantages of docking, obviously, is that it's autonomous and the spacecraft itself can initiate and complete the process. Um, but the uh, hatch size is a lot smaller because of those necessary docking equipment. Uh, they're all around uh, the edge of the, of the hatch. Yeah, you can actually get a really easy comparison with this view. So obviously the docking hatch is that small circle you see way in the foreground. This square shape that you can see Anne McLean just at on the, on the screen on the right, that is a common berthing mechanism. So when the cargo dragons arrive, uh, that's what they ultimately get bolted to. So you can see just kind of how much more clearance uh, that can give a vehicle. But that does require you to actually bolt or attach and then bolt the spacecraft to that mechanism. You can't just fly in and dock like Dragon did earlier this morning. That's why it's important to have a healthy ecosystem of uh, spacecraft that are capable of visiting the space station to transport uh, both humans and cargo of various sizes. And that's also why we use the pressurized mating adapter. That's 
Uh, in some of the external views, you've seen uh, a large black structure that the Dragon is docked to, and that's essentially to turn a square hole into a circular hole. And uh, that just allows you to change the type of docking adapter that you're able to put on there. It looks like we got some cargo coming out. I've said it before, but hard to believe that thing was sitting on top of a Falcon 9 only 27 hours ago. <clears throat> and now they're transferring cargo out of the top hatch. Station Houston on two, and at this time we recommend that you set up the detectors and David can help Oleg with the sample as needed. Looks like they're already digging into some of that cargo that was brought up by the Crew Dragon. Yeah, it looks like David St. Jacques there, uh, close up to the camera on the on the right side. Uh, he's right now back in Node 2, the Harmony module, uh, along with Anne McLean. Meanwhile, Oleg Konyenko is still inside Crew Dragon. We should see him pop out in a little bit as soon as he's done getting that air sample. And there he comes. And moving back out. Again, keeping that hatch open uh, as the air won't readily mix by itself uh, and you know, without any gravity to help convection along. Crew getting a chance to take a couple of photos is uh, they're surely going to want to commemorate the moment too. It's a little selfie action. Can't can't help that. I'd be doing the same thing. All right. So the hatchway open again. It's going to take a little while for them to just do final ratings on all of the samples, and then the folks on the ground, uh, actually over in Mission Control. Houston Station, step 9.4, the detector CTB is retrieved, all crew are out of Dragon, we're currently in lab forward. Copy. And so it sounds like the crew now back in the Destiny Laboratory. You heard Anne McLean call down there in lab forward. Uh, that's the larger uh, laboratory module on board the station. That's where a lot of the uh, U.S. based experiments are housed. Uh, but they're going to go back there and now compare the air samples that they took inside of Dragon with just the background ones that they're able to get there in Destiny. And we're expecting it to take about 30 minutes or so until the teams on the ground are able to look through all the data and then they get the go to actually begin the, the mixing of the atmosphere between the Dragon spacecraft and the International Space Station. Because as Tom and I both said, that doesn't just happen. Just because the hatch is open, the air inside of Dragon is not readily flowing inside of the station until we actually turn on some fans that make that process work. And that's just one of those quirks of living in microgravity. You, gotta con you have to actively move the atmosphere around inside. Station Houston on two for Epicot timing. Want to let you know that we are tracking that they will have um, at least uh, another five minutes remaining on them. Uh, 
All right, so again, the, the crew is out of the hatch, and again, that hatch opened at 5.07 a.m. Pacific, 8.07 a.m. Eastern Time, with Station and Dragon docked together, flying just about 255 statute miles over the northern Atlantic. Uh, the crew now going and taking a few more samples, and then that gets downlinked in data to the ground. We then get a chance to look at it, and then they'll move forward with uh, actually mixing all that air between Dragon and Station. And then shortly after that, we are expecting the crew to gather and all. Station from the lab, the both readings uh, indicate zero. We are looking at serial number 1001 and 1002. Are we copy? You're hearing the crew members uh, relay down the results of those analyses uh, to the ground controllers. And Anne, in step 10 decimal three, your max allowable will be one, two, five. Copy, one, two, five. Station, step 11.2, ready for re -ingress. And you are go. All right, so we're continuing to move through all of the procedures to get all these atmospheric readings, and we should see uh, Emma Klein, I believe, making her way down now. She's back there in node two at the hatchway. One of our other crew members now back inside of Dragon. There are a couple of additional atmospheric detectors that were flown on the vehicle. And so per their procedures, they're expecting this to take about three minutes for those detectors to finish. And then that next step will be completed. As Dan and I always say, uh, slow and steady wins the race uh, when it comes to bringing a new vehicle or any vehicle really to the International Space Station. Uh, all these tests are part of the uh, validation of this first flight and the Crew Dragon capsule. Uh, it's, and so right now those uh, atmospheric readings are taking help to prove that the air inside Dragon 2 is safe after its ascent. Uh, all part of this prove out uh, process of this new vehicle for its maiden launch. That's right. De demo one, an appropriate name as it is a demonstration, as we as we've talked about uh, over the last couple of days and in briefings and in all of our our live shows. This is a demonstration uh, because we need to kind of put the vehicle through the paces, make sure we catch anything and shake out all the kinks, because the next flight is the one, as Kirk Shireman said, for record. That's the one where we're going to have crew members on board of Dragon. It's going to be two NASA astronauts, Doug Hurley and Bob Bankin, who were kind enough to stop by for a little while earlier. They've been here uh, in Hawthorne watching all the operations unfold. They actually hopped on a flight. They were in Florida for the launch, got over here to watch everything unfold, and believe they should be back here to actually watch all of the uh, splashdown operations a little bit later this week. Uh, again, Dragon scheduled to stay docked for about five days ultimately coming home 
for a splashdown on, I believe it's Thursday night, Friday morning, depending on where you are in the world. So a pretty quick mission, but a very important mission uh, to get in the books. This, the first flight of the commercial crew program to the International Space Station. So uh, a really big milestone, obviously, and something that's been a lot of years coming. Uh, but everything gone very smoothly so far with this mission. Vehicle docked, the hatch open, the crew doing a couple of final readings, and then Dragon will pretty much be ready to be fully integrated into the International Space Station. Ripley continuing to look very stoic in her seated position. And for those who didn't catch the launch or earlier in our uh, webcast this morning, uh, that is not a person inside of that suit. Uh, that is an anthropomorphic, I forget the full acronym, um, but it's essentially a test dummy uh, that's outfitted with test device, uh, that's outfitted with a number of sensors just to measure all of the different loads that a crew member in that seated position would be exposed to. There's also a microphone uh, around the device's ears. Um, so there Good station on two, all readings inside of Dragon R0, crew is back in the lab. Copy that, you guys are go to off masks and just remember to remain aft of node two and we are gonna start our 36 minute timer now for the atmosphere mixing. Thanks. All right, so that's great news. Reporting everything looking good inside of Dragon. And so now the teams on the ground are going to flip the switch, and it's going to be time for the atmosphere in Dragon to start getting mixed with that of the International Space Station. Uh, they said there's going to be a 36 minute timer, so they are expecting about 36 minutes or so for this process to kind of take its course and for Dragon to get fully integrated with the station atmosphere. So another milestone checked off. Might see that uh, zero G indicator uh, now floating up as the air starts mixing, uh, maybe giving it a little more freedom uh, to move around. Um, so with that, we're going to take a little break here while the crew continues all their checks about Dragon. Uh, right now, everything is looking great. Uh, the crew is given the order to doff their masks. Uh, sounds like the atmosphere is good to go and good to mix. Uh, we are going to come back when they're ready to share a few words. So stay with us, and we'll be back later when the crew is ready to uh, celebrate a, uh, a dock and gone well.
Dash in Houston on two. Our timers for mixing the air have expired. Your go for part three at your convenience. Copy. Thank you.
in station on two for ingress. Go ahead, David. All right, at step 13 decimal five, IMB ducting is installed, ready for IMB fan activation. <laughs> 